it's Katie here from the A Periodical, and I have brought a group of mathematicians. Hello. Today we're going to attempt to calculate the value of pi using various stupid methods. So we're going to approximate pi, we're not allowed to use a calculator, uh, and we're, we're going to try and measure things and weigh things and time things, uh, and use this to try and calculate increasingly accurate values for pi. We have got pi hours, uh, and in the spirit of pi day, we've not actually used pi hours, we're actually using three hours 14 minutes and 15 seconds, which isn't quite pi hours. So to satisfy those of you who would like us to actually measure time using pi, we've got an equivalent pi clock down at the bottom. So every pi seconds this will increment down, they will both reach zero at the same time, at which point we will stop and we'll decide who has got the best approximation to pi out of all of us. Uh, so should we, should we go? Should yeah. we start? Let's go. We're ready? Here we go. Pi three, two, two one, one, go! Let's calculate pi. So Sam, how are you going to calculate pi? I'm going to draw polygons with more and more sides and compare their diameters to their perimeters. And the more sides I've got, the closer it will get to pi. I'm going to use this piece of string and this pen to draw a large circle where all of my other shapes will be inside. Start with a square and then get more and more. How are you going to approximate pi? Well, I'm going to make a big pendulum and we're going to set the pendulum swinging and time how long it takes for the pendulum to come. One complete swing and um, from that length of time we're going to derive a value for pi. So, the formula for uh, time that it takes to complete one swing is twice pi times the square root of the length of the string divided by the acceleration due to gravity. But what I thought we might do to save on having to work out any square roots, if we make the length in metres of the string one quarter the acceleration due to gravity in metres per second per second. So we will make L equal to G divided by 4, four. Yep. and then the G's will cancel, this square root of one quarter, which is a half, will cancel with this two and we'll just be left with the, in theory, the pendulum should take exactly pi seconds to complete one swing. So, um, we have a load of these drawers, all the same length, and we have a piece of paper with some parallel lines drawn that are all the same width apart as these drawers. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get absolutely loads of them and drop them onto the paper. And, in theory, the proportion of these straws that cross the lines to the total number of straws should approximate pi over 2. So we double it and hopefully we get pi. What are we doing here? We are doing the uh, secondary school math teacher's favourite of drawing uh, circles, measuring the diameter, measuring the circumference. Once we've got the circumference of a circle and we've got the diameter, we can do the circumference divided by the diameter and they should give us a good approximation of pi. We're going to do this with a variety of sizes of circles, so starting from the queen on the coin with a pin jabbed into her face as a little trundle wheel, the slightly larger cardboard sizes, and then our daredevil conclusion, we're going to try and see if we can get a decent approximation of pi from a, a cartwheel. We'll take the side position of the foot as a starting point, yep. do a cartwheel, the landing point for that foot should give us the circumference of the cartwheel and we'll do some sort of measurement, sort of hand, top of the hand to the bottom of the foot as a diameter and see if that gives us something we can work with. Andrew, how are Hello. you approximating pi? Well, I've been given a set of balloons to approximate pi with. Um, the idea being that if you blow them up a bit, it's basically a sphere. And the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So it's got a pi in it. We can rearrange it, we get pi in terms of the volume of a radius. What we actually want is the volume of a diameter because that's much easier to measure, but it comes down to you measure the width of it, you cube it, and you divide 6 times the volume by that number and you get pi. Okay. That sounds a lot simpler than it's actually turning out to be because the problem is that if I tip this into a jug you can't really see what the volume is. Okay. So we've been filling them with water. The problem now 
is that using the tap, that's what you get. Right. <laughs> that has a diameter of about four centimetres when you squidge it into a sphere. Yep. Which is not a lot. So right. I've got ten balloons right. in here. <laughs> yep. and, and this has a volume of about 350 millilitres ish. So a volume of 350 millilitres, I've worked out an approximation of pi. I've said it's 35 millilitres per balloon. So six 35s over four cubed works out to be 105 over 32, which I worked out 3.28125 for my first run of balloons. So what we've got here is a formula that Euler came up with. He worked out that if you multiply it on the top of each fraction, successive prime numbers, and in the denominator you want um, the nearest multiple of four to that number, so it could be one larger or one smaller. And if you multiply them all together, going through all the prime numbers, you should get pi over four. Okay, that seems simple enough. So it starts off nicely because the first term is three over four. It's going to give us pi over four, so we multiply the whole thing like four. First approximation is three. That bodes well. That, that I, does I, bode I well, yeah. So what are you doing, Ash? I'm doing the Spigot algorithm for pi. We're using this formula here. What I have to do is sub in the values for k, and that should give me the each digit of pi. So far, I've only got three. Right, <laughs> yes. that's a good start. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's working. <laughs> oh, here we go, here we go. Two hours left, everyone. Two hours of pi calculating remaining. So, have you done any calculations? Yeah, we've got a value for g, the acceleration due to gravity, that's 9.80665 meters per second per second. second. Uh, we've done some good old fashioned division by four to get the length in meters that we want for our string, which is just a little bit over 2.45 meters. All right, so we've made a pendulum that as near as we can get it is 2.4516625 meters long. So hopefully when we set this going, it will take exactly pi seconds to complete one swing. I can put a little line on the wall so that we can uh, stop the watch just as the string goes past that line. Okay, so how are we doing? Um, not bad. So you can see we got to about 3.258 at one point and then it seems to have headed off away from pi. So I switched to a different numerical method. Um, this is another infinite product where now the numerators are 4n squared and the denominator is 4n squared minus 1 and that's going to give us pi, pi over 2 at the end. Unfortunately this one is a lot less efficient than the last one. So you can see I've started off with 2.6 recurring you know, we're heading towards pi, 2.9, that's not too bad. Then we've just way overshot and we're down at 4.02 here. Um, the next fraction is going to have about 10 digits on the top and 9 or 10 on the bottom, so I might be switching back to the other algorithm in a minute. So we've tested the pendulum and so we're going to 
uh, time 10 complete swings of the pendulum, and that should take 10 pi seconds, and we'll uh, do that five times and take an average, and that'll be our final value for pi. Okay, so what's your final value for pi? Um, so what I have here is after nine steps of Euler's algorithm, we've got 3.2645. That's fairly right, close. Yeah. So Sam, how close have your polygons got you to pi? Pretty close, it's gone pretty well. Um, so the square, I measured the size of the square to be 78 centimetres. Um, obviously there's four sides in a square. Um, so the perimeter of the square was 312 centimetres. Um, the diameter of the whole thing, well, of the circle, was 108 centimetres. So I divided the 312 by 108, gave about 2.9. The octagon, so the, each edge there measured 42 centimetres, gave us 3.1 recurring. Then the 16-sided shape had each edge measure 21.1 centimetres, gave us 3.1250, and the 32-sided shape um, <laughs> that had each edge measured 10.6 centimetres gave us 3.1462. It's pretty close. Okay, so what's your final value or values for pi? Well, so the initial one I did with 10 small balloons gave me 3.28 and shape. This large balloon, when it was fully inflated, gave me uh, 3.215 and change, which is still a bit high. Um, and I then tried with I found two kind of roughly hemispherical balls which I filled completely to the brim with water and they gave me a value of 2.909 recurring-ish. Okay, so Paul, what's your final value for pi? Well, a source of error that we hadn't reckoned with was the cheapness of the stopwatch we were using. So, as you can see, it only gave us two different times across the five trials, but we've averaged them anyway and got an average of 31.3308 seconds for 10 swings giving our value of pi as uh, 3.13308. Okay, and how has the Spigot algorithm fared? Uh, uh, all right in actually the answer it's given, but I only managed to get through two terms of it. I think after six pages of work, I managed to get a decent representation of pi. So Sam, what's your final value from dropping sticks? So after many, many trials, and picking up quite a few little straws and dropping quite a few. 3.1413. So that means that the winning value of pi, the closest approximation to the actual value, was this, achieved by Buffon's Needle. So congratulations, Sam. Thank you to everyone who took part in the pi approximation challenge. And if you would like to have a go at approximating a value for pi, send us a video, we'd love to see it. <laughs>